algebraic group actions on normal braids. Uh, and I say my relation with uh, Linda goes a long way back to we meeting in Nova Sibirs in uh, 89. <laughs> it was quite an experience for Western mathematicians, especially for people from my generation, because we had no contact with uh, mathematicians. Basically, uh, only by reading papers in uh, this functional analysis and its applications. <laughs> and there were very tough papers of five pages. It took me several months to go to one page. <laughs> I was very happy to meet people and ask questions about every world. <laughs> so, but that was a great experience. And, uh, since then, uh, we have many good uh, contacts. So I'm very happy to give this talk. For the title, uh, maybe I'll put this here. Uh, like both actions. So the starting point is a very classical result of uh, Z, which uh, says the following. You consider a field, uh, connected as you buy book, okay? Algebraic variety, also okay. There's a birational action of P. I'll give you details in a minute. And then you can modify the variety to make the action uh, biregular. whenever it can be. So it has to be defined at any neutral element times x and uh, it has to be associative uh, whenever it's defined. So that's the data and uh, the statement asserts there exists uh, a birational isomorphism here, maybe f, such that if you pull back the action by this uh, Isomorphism, so this will be I and P and F, then this action becomes uh, a morphism of the bar to bar. Okay. And uh, in the uh, first part of this talk, I'll provide some uh, addition to this uh, theorem. We may take Y to be projective. not in a vague statement, but uh, I try to explain how this works. And uh, once you get there, you can also assume smooth in characters to zero. Okay. So, your x was irreducible. Your, your x was irreducible. Uh, well, uh, I didn't say anything about conventions on varieties. So, uh, algebraic groups will be smooth uh, group schemes of funny type. Okay. Varieties will be 
geometrically irreducible. It means if you go to the algebraic closure, they are irreducible. And that's what Uvel um, meant in uh, his work. Okay, if I understood properly. <laughs> because uh, but it's a uh, you have to translate things. Anyway, that's what uh, I want to explain. So, why I call such, such an addition? Uh, there are several reasons. Uh, first of all, it was used earlier, before it was proved, by people in uh, uh, bilateral geometry. And I saw this uh, result being used in some papers, with very nice results. And then I walked to the authors to ask them how they did this. And they told me, why it's your work? <laughs> so I set on to do my own work and, uh, after some efforts. I guess I, I could prove this. And uh, secondly, uh, in this way you can start working and classify or describe uh, connected uh, groups of bilateral automorphisms because you, you land in a much more concrete situation. So let me explain uh, in some examples what you get. Uh, the first example will be uh, well, dimension x one. Well, you think there is not much to do, but uh, since you over arbitrary field, there is a little uh, work to do. So then uh, you can take y, of course, objective. Uh, you may also assume y to be normal, let's uh, go to the normalization. Uh, then it's a curve, of course, it's geometrically irreducible. And now you may assume that g is contained in the neutral component of the automorphic group of this normal curve. And uh, normal is uh, equivalent to regular. In, uh, this, uh, situation of curves. So uh, the many things are known on curves and from this you can do the uh, E of G is contained in a projective orthogonal group of some quadratic form. Uh, This comes from the curve y being a, a conic. Uh, <coughs> since you have an arbitrary fit, maybe your curve has no point at all. So you think of the projective line if you are used to an algebraic closed field, but here it's just a conic. So you get this. Or g could be an elliptic curve. And then the curve is the same as g. Oh, g. G. The curve is also G. <laughs> That's how it is. Uh, and there is a first case which is kind of mysterious, which is... Uh, yeah, but uh, I guess in this case the curve can be an non-trivial torso over G. Uh, yes. Uh, right. You're right. So, uh, G is an empty curve and X is a uh, uh, torso. This is still G is... Uh, well, uh, final example is uh, G is a K form of uh, the group and uh, Y is a uh, unique equivalent condition. Uh, this example uh, only exists on an uh, imperfect field, so it's a kind of uh, hidden uh, if you are familiar with an exactly closed field. So let me give uh, the first example of this such curves. Uh, you take k to be uh, rational functions in one variable over a finite field, and y to be defined by the uh, homogeneous equation yp equals x z p minus 1 plus z x okay. uh, it looks strange but you see uh, if you go over the if you can extract the p fruit of t mm -hmm. then uh, you can rewrite this equation as uh, 
y minus <coughs> t minus p x to the p equals x z t minus y. Maybe you cannot read this line, but you just make a formal manipulation with this equation and you rewrite it as a some power of a linear form is equal to something. So you can forget about the linear form and there remains only one coordinate. So the curve is just uh, a fine line, a projective line if you, well, with some singularity uh, if you extract this piece root. But if you don't, cannot extract this piece root, this curve is, has a high genus, it has an irreducible equation of a large degree. So it's not a trivial object. And this shows up here because we consider things about one So that was the first class of examples. Let me discuss uh, some more uh, uh, familiar examples, which uh, you also saw. I mean, many of you are more familiar than I am with these examples. So if you consider the case where dimension 2, And uh, I divide equals field k. Then what you have for y <coughs> is a projective surface. Uh, what you can do is take a resolution of singularities, which is uh, equivalent. This always exists because uh, what you can do is draw up points, uh, normalize, and repeat the process. And after a while, you uh, resolve singularities. And if you draw up just fixed points of the group, you have an equivalent resolution. Then you can contract the minus one curve. To obtain what uh, is the uh, Called a relative minimal model. And uh, this operation is also equivalent. This is a known fact. So, what you obtain at the end is uh, you, put, you, you put on the G in a connected uh, component of some uh, class of surfaces which is. Uh, when I must do it. And then you can start describing the G's. And, uh, let me write the answer up here. So, G can be a rational surface. Uh, then you get uh, T2, T1 times T1. Uh, here the whole surface of N, uh, where N is bigger than T2. This are uh, all surface of the projective line. Uh, then come many other surfaces, but very few have uh, uh, non-trivial groups of automorphisms. And what remains are uh, whole surfaces over elliptic curves. Uh, maybe the curve of G is one to be completely precise. And uh, finally, what you get is a Navin surface. Some surface which is homogeneous under uh, Navin variety of dimension 2. Okay, and then uh, with this list, it's easy to get a list of uh, maximal subgroups that you get. Arise in this way, so let me write them in, in the same order. And, uh, not a good choice to do this, but anyway, you will remember. So I'm not writing particularly. So here three, this is for P2, P1, because P1 is of course uh, this one. Uh, this uh, gadget is a semi like product of Z and 2 of no n schools of unity, so we can product this Vn. Well, Vn is a standard representation of dimension n of GL2. Uh, n symmetric power of the standard representation. Uh, 
Maybe do it. And the main root of unity are trivial in some sense. So this is for Fn. Then uh, there, there are these whole surfaces or the curves of minus two. Uh, what you get in this way is an extension of the analytic curve. Uh, by uh, a group of dimension one. And the elliptic curve is, uh, of course, uh, one associated with the uh, base. And uh, finally, you get an ideal surface. <coughs> OK. Yeah. And, and these are the maximum uh, connected subgroups. And yes. why don't you have something like E O of Q1 times E O of Q2? Because uh, I'm uh, over an algebraic equals to now. To so simplify my life. Otherwise, uh, this would be much longer, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure to know it. So, uh, this is uh, just what you get from a uh, classical surface theory. And of course, that, or well, most of this evidence, uh, was known before, uh, in some way. And actually, all these uh, groups appear in a classical work of uh, Eriques and Fano. <coughs> yes. Could you repeat that? What is V? What is Vn? Vn is a nth symmetric power of the natural representation of Vn two, uh -huh. and so Vn, which is a group of central rows of unity, act trivially on this Vn. Okay. So you get this uh, list, which is uh, some uh, direct application of uh, surface theory plus. Uh, This uh, work. Now I will explain how to prove uh, this uh, addition. And, uh, actually, there are two uh, ingredients uh, which are on uh, regular actions. So again, G will be a connected and by group. <coughs> and now X will be a normal. Um, G variety. <coughs> and uh, there will be two statements. Um, first of all, X is covered by an open G stable quasi projective. Subsets uh, has some kind of uh, structure uh, with them. Four. It can be equivalently embedded. In something which I will write over there. Uh, well, uh, For those of you who are familiar with uh, action of linear algebraic groups, this uh, thing here should be the projectivization of uh, representation. But here we have some uh, pieces which come from uh, abelian varieties, so we have to put them uh, together. And the result is uh, something like this G plus H P of U, where H is the normal subgroup of G. G mod H <coughs> is an abelian variety. <coughs> and uh, V is a H mod <coughs> And uh, well, uh, P of V is a projectivization of this module. And this uh, object up here already, in, uh, I guess, several talks. It's a homogeneous projective bundle associated with G mod H and the action of H on this object. So, so G is, H is a linear of the group? <coughs> Not necessarily. Uh, it acts on uh, P of V for a linear quotient, but possibly H can be one. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, if the action is faithful, you can, by which I could have decided, <laughs> assume, assume then uh, H is linear. And yet another question, uh, <coughs> X itself were quasi-projective, uh, can it be embedded? Can X itself be embedded? Uh, if it, uh, well, the assumption of theorem 2 is uh, X is a quasi-projective normal. Ah, okay, so the theorem is for X, if yes. it is quasi-projective. Uh, for X, when X is quasi-projective. Okay, uh, I tried to make it compact, but uh, was not so successful. Okay, so these are the statements. So let's see how you reduce uh, this uh, addition from uh, statements. Why it's uh, very easy. Well, you start with an arbitrary G variety, Y. This is what you get after applying this theorem uh, of name. Then you replace it with an open quasi projective. This table is set. Because um, you are only interested in uh, uh, birational classes. And then you compactify it by uh, using theorem 2 and taking the closure. And the point, which is uh, quite easy, is that this variety here is projective. And that's it. Sorry, what did we prove? We proved theorem Y or? No. If I prove what is written on the blackboard, then you will take your glasses and read addition. Proof of addition? What is addition? It was erased uh, some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> This is a complement to Weyl's theorem, which says that the variety occurring in Weyl's theorem can be assumed to be projective. I think you have to first normalize. Oh, Why? yes. I mean, it's very really uh, trivial because of this inequality. Uh, it's canonical. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I was an older world after all that. With the help of the audience. Thank you. But now, I think, anyway, it's written, so you <laughs> agree. So, uh, Okay, so this addition uh, followed just by combining two results. But uh, at this stage, you, you may think everything is formal and works without effort, but uh, you have to be a bit careful with this general nonsense because theorem 1 is false for G finite. And uh, maybe I'll make some remarks. <laughs> And uh, in fact, there is a very famous example of Hermann uh, Lacan, which uh, provides a uh, smooth complete trifold with an involution. And uh, some points. So that uh, this point and its image under the involution are not contained in any open affine subset. <coughs> That's uh, well, one uh, version of this example of Hiromaka. And if you have this, then uh, these uh, two points are not contained in a quasi projective G stable uh, subset either, because you could cover this quasi projective subset by a fine invariant uh, subset. That's uh, quite simple by taking uh, sections with uh, well, removing zeros of uh, G invariant sections. Okay? And uh, so, why do you have to be uh, so much careful with uh, these generalities? Uh, here on like as example is a paper in uh, Anas of Maps in the 60s. Uh, but he doesn't exactly construct this. But uh, one can find on Wikipedia a whole page on uh, here on like example is many variants and one of them is 
Okay. So Wikipedia it is not, it not correct. Sorry? The example on Wikipedia is not correct. Why? <laughs> Why do you know example is correct? <laughs> <laughs> No, you, it's correct, you, you have to revise the page in Wikipedia. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's sketchy. Uh, secondly, the <laughs> remark is uh, theorem 1 um, was actually known before. Uh, and it follows from a recent result of. Uh, Finitely many maximal quasi projective sets. So this is uh, just now a normal variety has only finitely many maximal quasi projective open sets. And this looks like a crazy result. It's a very abstract. It was a conjecture of uh, Vodarczyk. And uh, Vodarczyk proved it in special cases. And Benoit came with a very nice proof in a paper that... Uh, this is well, it's somewhere hidden in the paper, but uh, the statement is definitely there. And uh, how does this uh, follow? Does this imply if you have one? Because we take any of these maximal quasi projective open subsets. And uh, of course, since there are finitely many of them, they are permuted by the group. No, because every point is in some affine open subset. Even in this strange uh, variety. <laughs> That's the definition of a scheme. <laughs> so, you're safe. <laughs> but uh, still, uh, so this is covered by these open subsets, and they are all G stable because G cannot, can only convert them. So the proof is, is not. not and, uh, I must say, I realized this uh, after I posted the paper on the archive. That's how these things work. You post something on the archive, and then some uh, person tells you, well, I proved this before, and it's trivial. Okay. So uh, that's a nice fact. and. Uh, in particular, it also works uh, for the classical case where you want to use this result of sum zero. So let me also comment on theorem two. Which is again here. So you have this strange embeddings. But as you observed, if G is uh, 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 say linear, it just tells you that X uh, can be embedded into some P of G. And this is exactly the uh, solution. So which is also very classic. So you have to prove a kind of addition, which is uh, you have not uh, don't have a product space, but a product space bundle over an admin variety. And the proof of Sumi Hero's theorem, uh, as you probably know, goes by uh, linearization of line bundles. Let me recall how this works. You take an ample line bundle on X. <coughs> and then Sumi Hero uh, wrote that some positive power has a G action. Compatible with uh, that on X. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, yes? Maybe it's a stupid question, but um, so does every variety have an ample line bundle on it? Yes, quite a good idea. Quite a good idea, yes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I agree with this. The variety of your hero matter doesn't have. <laughs> but for this one, uh, it's again safe. So, okay, so, uh, so here I'll pose a little bit more, then uh, this n can be chosen independent of the group. Of, uh, sorry, of the group. Right. It only depends on two. Uh, well, here there is no chance that this proof uh, works because uh, if you take. Uh, a linearized uh, line bundle over an abelian variety is automatically trivial by just uh, inspection. So you have to do something else. And uh, the idea is uh, to use uh, polarization. So <coughs> let me. Uh, how much time do I have? Um, less than 20 minutes. Less 18. Than 18 minutes. So yeah. I give a sketch of proof of theorem 2. In this uh, 10 minutes, it will be very shaky. So, but uh, I think the idea is quite simple. But then you you have to do a lot of uh, technical work. Okay. So, what you want to produce is. Uh, The equivalent map from X to some homogeneous space G of H, where H is as in the theorem. Because uh, once you have this, uh, you will know that X is an associated fiber bundle around G mod H. And, uh, <coughs> well, there is some reduction I should have made, as uh, pointed by participants, uh, uh, plus R H linear. Okay. If you have this, then uh, you can uh, use uh, more or less some zero theorem for the fiber of this map. I'm saying more or less because there are some technical problems. Uh, if you work in positive characteristics, this H might not be reduced. <coughs> and uh, it's certainly not uh, connected, usually. So uh, I'm hiding these problems from this talk. Uh, because you have to work much more on Sumi Hero's theorem to deal with these things. That's the way. That's how. I can say. So let's try to construct such a map. <coughs> so we will map X to some abelian variety. Well, uh, okay. There is a universal such map, which is the Albanese morphism, that exists by general results. But it's not so, so good because we, we want this to be homogeneous under G in addition, so we have to do something else. But just to construct such a map, we can think of uh, the duality of abelian variety. This is a uh, zero of the dual abelian variety. Maybe, uh, I write in this set. Okay. So this is a kind of no duality of abelian or bi duality of abelian variety. Every abelian variety is a group of line bundles, which are algebraically trivial, and some other one, which is U. Now, to get a map from X to the Picard group of something is the same, more or less, as to have a family of line bundles on 
the product x cross okay. And the map will be the following. If you have a one well, of if you have an unbundle on a product, you can specialize it to small x times a hat, so you get an unbundle on a hat indexed by points of x. And this is exactly such a map. And actually, with some normalization, which I will skip, the, these data are equivalent. But now, uh, well, uh, it's, it doesn't look so, so good at this point because how to get a line button on uh, x cross a hat? Well, uh, we, we have one on um, g cross x. So, on G cross X, we have a, a lambda given by more or less the nature. It is a pullback of the lambda given by the action. So, actually, we have two of them. We have two maps from uh, G cross X to X. We have the rope action and the projection. Uh, these uh, maps uh, are the main ingredient of the proof of uh, Sumi Hero's theorem, and uh, I just try to follow the outline of the proof. So on X, you have a uh, line bundle L, which is uh, the sample. And uh, what you do is construct uh, a bundle L, which is this one. The difference of both. And if the line bundle were G linearized, this would be trivial. Actually, if and only if. So this is really the construction to linearization of this bundle. And now, uh, well, okay, it's on G cross X, but the point is uh, it comes from a line bundle on some abelian variety type X. And the reason for this is a theorem of uh, Chevalier. It's also part of the classical uh, toolkit of algebraic groups. So is a unique event sequence. This is, uh, uh, you see, a linear algebra groups is generated by rational curves. And they all go to points in any morphism to them. Or it's a rational group. So that's, uh, as you said, it's in the minus of the genetic meaning. And now what you do. Uh, observe that uh, this bundle can be linearized for the action of the linear part. <coughs> Maybe not the original bundle, but some power. And this is exactly Sumi here. So. Some invariance property. It's trivial on uh, G uh, times x, or all translates. So 
So today is uh, L depends on N. This figure on G. Okay. And now you will believe me if I say that this line bundle descends to a line bundle on uh, A cross X. by GD times identity and uh, you get uh, n and n and here we get another one n such that n is a good lack of n and that's the line that you're, you're looking for except that I messed up the notation and uh, this a should be a dual but anyway you can use a by variety of correct so that's the idea, you just produce a line bundle on the process by this uh, construction. Then you have to prove a number of things which are uh, technical. For example, that uh, this restriction of on A times some point is ample. But this comes basically from the construction. Take the full back of the ample. So then I, I will not uh, give any further details. I will just uh, I maybe ask a couple of questions because uh, it's not the end of the story. As you see, the statements are okay for connected groups, but I think there is interest in uh, non-connected groups. And uh, so uh, the question is, is the addition valid uh, for non-connected groups? Uh, you remember, uh, take value theorem and add uh, productivity. <coughs> and uh, this is okay in the linear case. And this is against <coughs> some addition to Sumi Hero's result, which is uh, against some technical work. work. And uh, in general, I don't know. It looks like a simple exercise, but uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm able to answer this. And also, is there a version of theorem 2? <coughs> for non connected groups. This would be also useful, and uh, it seems all the ingredients are there, but uh, again, uh, I don't, uh, <coughs> I cannot guess any reasonable version. Uh, maybe I can uh, give you a reformulation which uh, can help. Uh, which uh, is more intrinsic than this uh, uh, bundle construction. Again, for G connected, and then uh, you will see, or maybe you can guess better than, my, than myself how you could extend it. Uh, well, G acts on X, it's a data, and then uh, you have, as uh, mentioned in the audience, some uh, universal map. To an abelian variety, which is Albanese morphism. Uh, actually, this depends on the choice of base points, and uh, I will not be uh, very careful with this, just to explain the idea. And since this is universal, it comes with. Uh, it uh, gives you an action of G on this Albanese variety. And uh, it's easy to believe that uh, this uh, action is true of its uh, Albanese variety, Albanese variety, which is uh, the A we have. Uh, 
a, a bit earlier. <coughs> so what we get is an action of A, and I'm going to write here on another one, which is uh, just a morphism of like that, okay, morphism of groups, and the reformulation of theorem 2 is this morphism has a finite curve. Again, if G acts uh, effectively on X. It's not hard to see, but uh, now it uh, looks much more concrete. But uh, it's equally, well, it's not, uh, for me, it's not a simplification <laughs> for the proof. But now you have this uh, statement, which is much more intrinsic. It uh, doesn't depend on the choice of, uh, of these scattered. Because you see, uh, if you have something like that, then you can replace G mod H by every quotient and get another version of this uh, uh, kind of. Uh, this is not unique, not uniquely defined by G. If you have a morphism from X to G mod H, you have a morphism from G to from X to G modulo every larger subject. Okay. So you can modify this here, but here you have some intrinsic formula. And well, uh, maybe there's uh, some uh, clever way to get a uh, nice general business. Okay, thank you.